Our next topic, and in fact our next two topics, have to do with read-only domain controllers. And remember, read-only domain controllers are designed for that single use case where you've got an unprotected or a quasi-protected, physically protected uh, domain controller that's sitting out on the floor or underneath someone's desk somewhere. The whole point of an RODC is that you only replicate down the passwords, the usernames and passwords, that have to do with the people in that branch office. And so there are a couple of just extra steps that you'll want to go through to ensure that you end up only replicating exactly that content down. One of which is to ensure that you never log in with a privileged account. And in fact, let me, I want to kind of show you one little web page here uh, from Microsoft TechNet that can just warn you about some of the potential peril of logging into an RODC with an improper account. It is never a good idea to log into an RODC with a privileged account like domain admin or like an enterprise admin. And the reason for this is because if we look here on this TechNet web page, the TechNet web page is titled uh, RODC Administration. There's a one little tidbit here that can actually get you if you're not careful. And that has to do with restricting logons to privileged accounts uh, in sites that have RODCs. Because you will deploy RODCs in locations where they could possibly be compromised, you should manage them in the same way that you, other, that you manage other potentially non-secure computers. In other words, you always treat an RODC as if it is not secure. You should never log in to an RODC, either remotely, locally, or with terminal services, as a domain admin or an enterprise admin. Because if you do that, there is the chance that your credentials could get cached on that local server. And a potential attacker could use those credentials to essentially gain access to the rest of your network. In fact, if you continue reading, you'll find that it's not necessary for a compromised RODC to if even cache the password of a privileged account to use that account maliciously. So long and short of it is, is if you do end up creating RODCs, and if you do have them in un, you know, unprotected locations, physically unprotected locations, do not attempt to log on to that machine with a privileged account, with a domain admin or an enterprise admin account. Very bad idea. Now you may be asking yourself, okay, Greg, well, um, if I can't log in with an account that has privileges, well, then how do I actually get someone to administer the RODC? One of the neat things about RODCs is the fact that a read-only domain controller has a, a special type of administrator. One that does not have administrator really anywhere else is just going to be an administrator on the RODC and will give that individual, usually an individual that's local to that remote office, the abilities to, for example, patch the server, to, to, to reboot the server, to update the server occasionally, or even perform some very small maintenance tasks. Now, there are a couple of ways in which you can actually um, assign a delegated RODC administrator, the easiest of which happens here in Active Directory Users and Computers. And in fact, if I look at the Domain Controllers node here, and I take a look at the RODC PHX-DC1, you'll see if I look over here under the Manage By tab, this Manage By tab actually has an additional uh, configuration here that you might not have noticed. And I, I say this because it, most of us just sort of skip past the Manage By tab. And uh, so it's something that's not easy to actually find because I just happen to just, I, I never use this tab for any other purposes. But the name tab here, the, the name item here, can be used to actually define who that delegated RODC administrator should be. So it is entirely possible for you to enter in a completely different username, like a very low privileged user, like uh, Don Jones, for example, our very you know, entry level uh, privileged user. That person would be your delegated RODC administrator. You can accomplish this here in the properties of the, uh, of, of the RODC itself. You can accomplish it also if you open an elevated command prompt and you run the command, which I can grab here, the command ntdsutil, the nt directory services utility, and then you focus it to local roles. If you do this on an RODC, this will give you the ability, again, to do the exactly the same thing that I did in Active Directory users and computers. You could also go to local security policy and you could give that person the log on locally right. That's a, a third option. But the, either of these two are the considered the, the, the best practice for how you define who that delegated RODC administrator is going to be.
Now again, this, this content doesn't necessarily track directly to that task, which is configuring replication to RODCs, but it does highlight some of the things you really got to know if you're planning on implementing these read-only domain controllers. Because if you don't do it correctly, again, it can kind of come back and bite you in ways that you are unexpected.